So, where's Bob today? I don't know, Professor. We haven't seen him all weekend. <laughs> no doubt doing one of his experiments to try and prove me wrong. Probably lost track of time. <laughs> all right, let's get on with it. I'd like to go over again the reasons why time travel is impossible. Bob! Where have you been? 50 million years into the future. <gasps> you were wrong, Professor. Time travel is possible. Don't be ridiculous. It is! I've built a machine. I have been to the future. A bulldog clip. It was from the future. I've got a bulldog clip too. Does that mean I've been to the future? <laughs> it's true, I tell you. Not everything from the future is futuristic. I mean, not everything in here is from the 21st century, is it? These chairs, that globe, that bra. Well, I take your point, Bob, I do. But why not bring something back that hasn't been invented yet? You could have got this from anywhere. Yeah, but it's obviously 50 million years old, isn't it? I mean, look how knackered it is. I'm sorry, Bob, but if you're trying to prove that time travel is possible, I'm going to need something a little more substantial than a bulldog clip. <laughs> you ignorant twats. You can't see the truth even when it's staring you in the face. Bob! Let him go, Jack. Well, Mr. Bob, did they believe you? No. Twats. They'll learn. One day. Mr. Bob? What is love? Actually, can you stop saying that, please? It's really starting to get on my tits. Bob, you, you mentioned my bra. Does that mean you like it? Hi. <laughs> um, I've got some news. Well, so do I. Oh, well, you go first. No, you go first. No, you. <laughs> you go first. Go on. <laughs> I'm, I'm gay. pregnant. Right. Right. Well, that's great news. Mm. <laughs> so I said, here, you lot, hop it. <laughs> and of course, they scarf it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, I think that's the door, but you guys carry on. Oh, who wants to hear about the time I found some unusual condoms in the bandstand? Oh, no, <laughs> me. <laughs> So one day I go to the bandstand to clean yeah. off some of the graffiti, right? And what should I see? But Everyone, a pile. This is Frank. All right. Frank is a park keeper at Charlton. He's just been telling me about the terrible problems they have with dogs. Well, they shit everywhere, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, there's this one bloke brings his Dalmatian in every morning, lets him shit wherever he wants, never cleans it up. <laughs> so the other day, I was ready for him. All right, there he is, letting his dog do a shit, bold as brass. So I says, here, mate, here's a plastic bag. Pick that shit up, put it in the bins provided. <laughs> <laughs> and then I says to him, I bet you don't let your dog shit at home. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've got some stories about some porn mags. You get porn mags down your park as well, do you? I, I don't know where they come from down our park. Oh, do you get a lot of them, Frank? The tales I could tell. Oh, go on, please. Oh, actually, Mick, would you mind just popping downstairs and fixing us a few margaritas? But the other one was... Everything's there. Just um, shout for Alice if you get lost. <laughs> no, I found a bunch of them the other day in the bushes behind the box. And they weren't just your Mayfair in your penthouse. They were really hardcore. <laughs> what did you do next, Frank? Well, I didn't want to pick them up because they're all damp. I mean, Christ knows what it was. Hopefully... Hopefully just water. <laughs> anyway, so I put my gloves on, stuck them in the bin. <laughs> yeah. Who knows who it was, don't know. Probably just kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 
it's not really. Yeah, we've well, got a park keeper. It's it's if you're a park keeper and feel like you're being sucked dry of your park keeping stories, then don't do what Mick did. Take your shirt off and slit your wrists. Call us at the Park Keeper's Social Pressure Helpline and we'll help you avoid taking your shirt off and slitting your wrists at a party. He's dead. This is the, uh, the most exciting subject for a science programme you could possibly have. This is uh, Jonathan Green from Cambridge. He first predicted the presence of these new planets. This is Max Rubenstein from Coltec. Now, he pioneered the techniques that led to the planets being detected. And he's a really good talker, fascinating to listen to. This is Henrik Schultz. He Excuse me, where are all the women? What do you mean? <laughs> well, it's shaping up to be quite male-dominated, don't you think? Um, well, I don't think there are any women actually in involved in the discoveries, just, just how it was. Well, I think we've got a problem then, haven't we, Toby? Because I can't see myself commissioning something so male-centric. Ah. Oh. Um. Next stop, the Cavendish Laboratories in Cambridge to meet the most important woman so far. Professor Schultz called me into his office about half four and said, could you photocopy six of these? <sighs> it was really exciting. I knew something was going on, but I didn't really know what. Anyway, um, I knocked off about half five that day because I was meeting Hannah down the wine bar. Hannah takes up the story. Well, I'd already got a um, bottle of rosé in, so then it was just a question of do we go for bar snacks or a full meal? In the end, we just went for the wine because we were both watching our weight at the time. Um, and obviously, I'm doing power plate now, so it just gives you the option. She's a natural. She makes it all sound so clear. Yeah, 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 she does, yeah, yeah. Don't you just love autumn? The colours and the smells. Look, a squirrel. <laughs> Rain, rain, get off there. You get off there. Why? What's the point in living if you can't take a few risks? What's the matter? Scared? No, I'm not scared. Come on then, let's have some fun. Yeah, you're right. What the hell's the matter with me? <laughs> the office can wait. Look, a leaf. I'm with a fantastic girl. What am I worried about? <laughs> let's do something crazy.